Welcome back to Farming Simulator and Greenland and we are going to be carrying on with precision farming type stuff. So let's roll the intro and get to work. Things first, who's the person who forgot to hit record when they started after recording the little intro piece? That would be me. Anyway, before we get into the precision farming stuff, we're going to look at selling some of our production outputs. And for that, we're going to have a look at the auto load trailers, which is something that I have not looked at at all yet in FS22, apart from the 10 minutes I've just done talking to myself because I forgot to hit record. So we are going to grab, I think, this Brockman trailer. Um, We'll see how many pallets this one can hold. I did try the other one, but it didn't hold very many pallets. So we're going to go for this one this time. Learning from our mistakes. And maybe at the very least, we can put some pallets on top. Hopefully this one will fit in the cell point because the cell point I was using as I was talking to myself is rather snug. So we will see. As I was saying to myself, the goal, one of the goals of this episode is to get to the point we can make a loan repayment. And I want that to be half a million pounds. I'm not sure we're going to get there, um, but we're going to try. Um, we've got some flour and some canola oil to sell. Could sell some sugar. We have a pallet of that as well that it might be worth selling. We don't have any chocolate yet. We're close to having a pallet of chocolate. And um, the other thing that I'm then going to do is get the liming and scamming, scamming, scanning finished. I may do some of that off camera. With I'm going to buy or actually I'm going to lease a new lime spreader to show you guys, which I think is going to improve the efficiency of your lime spreading in precision farming uh, so just going i'm so awful at reversing these trailers and um, i think that is a partly a keyboard problem it's really hard to gently reverse uh, let's turn the auto load on hoping this trailer will fit a few more pallets on so we're going to sell the canola oil and all of the flour. Yes. That's more like it. That's not even full yet. So there we go. That's more like it. get this sold and then we'll go grab the rest of the flour yes this is much better than the closed in trailer that i tried the first time this should be quite a nice payday yeah so i have been through and worked out our crop rotation as well and the other job i would like to do before we progress into december because we're still in november same day as the last video is get some oats in the field 43 and 44 which were our sugar beet fields now that's going to be obviously we can put that through the flour mill like we are last year's or this year's oat crop and we'll get a straw off it as well so yeah that's the plan for those fields the rest of the fields will be spring planting with some maize some canola some potatoes and some poplar i think the poplar is spring planting i should check that really that is not a bad payday 18 grand i'll take that uh, let's just check the poplar actually. Uh, poplar planting is in the spring. Cool. So the poplar is for the biomass eating plant that we have. Uh, the other job as we get into winter, so two jobs really for winter. And some of that I'll show, some of that I'll skip. And that'll be in the next video probably. Much, actually, I'll, I'll probably show most of it. Um, is getting some first layer fertilization down on the rest of the fields and getting some of the trees in our wild area cut down at the moment 
I think we're going to struggle to afford the plan to plant the big great vineyard. So what we might do, what we should do, we should have been cutting that for silage, but oh well. Um, I don't want the pig food. No, we're going to grab those, we're going to disable auto load. And we're going to pick the other flower pallet up with the tally truck. Yep. How is are we close to a chocolate pallet? We are kind of close to a chocolate pallet. I wonder if the fast food shop will take sugar as well. Yeah, well, it's not, in fact, it's the worst price, but it's good enough because the dairy won't actually pay us because we own it. So, let's grab the pallet of sugar as well. And we're going to kind of cheat because we're going to use auto load to take it off the forks. If I can even put it on the forks. There we go. So that's basically because I don't want to pick up the pig food pallets. I have a plan for the pig food. It is cunning, as you would expect, maybe. Um, but you can't guess what the plan for the pig food is. There we go. I like that. I do like that. Um, so yeah, we, we would need a lot more flour and canola oil to hit that half a million that I was talking about. Maybe we'll make a £400,000 loan payment. I really want to pay something off the loan. And the other thing that we could think about selling, but there isn't a sell point on the map for at the moment, but we could look for one, maybe use the sell everything mod, is fertilizer. I expect we could get quite a good price for fertilizer. We have the fertilizer production point over at the farm and we have an awful lot of digestate. So that would allow us to potentially bring in a bunch of extra cash as well. The other job I need to do today, so many demands on things, to buy the rest of the cows. I've only brought half of the dairy cows and I think maybe not even half of the beef cows. Maybe it's too early to repay the loan. I don't know. I really don't know. Okay, so another four grand. That's all the production sold, production's outputs sold off that I think we can. So head back to the farm. We're going to grab one of the tractors and we are going to then get our lime spreader and get to work on that, I think. I want to show you guys this lime spreader. I think we have a scanned field, so... Um, which is actually one of the fields that we need to plant but still needs liming so that is perfect plant seed we have the I think we have two cedars but we'll probably just use the one and that was only a six meter cedar mm. pondering pondering and the other thing we were going to do is replace the two slurry spreaders. Maybe we won't do that this year. Now, I'm parking the pickup over here because it doesn't fit very well in the carport on the side of the house. Uh, and I don't think we need the uh, workshop there. So which tractor are we going to use today? I think we'll use the class again. I'm really liking class at the moment, so uh, yeah. really liking my class tractors at the moment. Right, let's head over to the store. We've still got a fair bit of work to do with liming and scanning and stuff. I think if we can get, get we may not get all of the field scan today. We only really need to focus on getting 
the two fields that we want to plant with oats sorted and one of those is lined and they are both scanned so I think the other problem is I think the auger wagon is empty so we'll fill the lime spreader up from the BGA first I think um, I got nowhere near doing this in the previous recording. The smaller trailer that I used meant I spent a bit more time running backwards and forwards. So... Right. So the lime spreader that I'm looking at is the Yan Lancer Maximus. Holds 1200 litres, which is not a huge amount, but it uses a lot less lime. We're going to lease it because, yeah, what I just said about trying to repay loans. Um, uh, this, yes, I drove through a hedge. It's fine. Um, uses some sort of optimized application technology to use, I think, about one thirtieth of the amount of lime. I have no idea if that's a bug or intentional, but we're going to go with it today because it'll make it easier to relime our fields. Should have probably put this on the Deutz actually because it would have been quicker, but the Deutz is still on the leased auger wagon, which is empty, which is kind of annoying. But once we get into a routine, actually, we might want the, probably going to want the Deutz for seeding. Uh, the big class is still over at the sugar factory or the beet chopping factory chopping beets or feeding the beet chopper um, yeah there is so much going on on this map it's not just farming it's, uh, it makes me grateful for having Compson still because Compson is still quite you know quite simple let's play we've just added the greenhouses and the bees obviously but it's not got this level of complexity of so many productions running um, on top of precision farming and a big farm but i think yeah you just need to get into the swing of running everything and it'll be fine and this first year of precision farming is always hard work because of all the extra liming Pull in here, we should have plenty of lime still. There we go. So it holds 12,000 litres, so it shouldn't be too heavy on the back of this class, I don't think. Should be okay. Uh, yeah, let's go see if we can get some lime spread. So, I was musing in the Calmstone video about basically going down to not quite two Let's Play series. Um, focusing on Greenlands and Calmstone for single player Let's Play. And then we've got Western, Wild, Wild Western, whatever it is. I should learn the name of that map. The multiplayer, competitive multiplayer with Kartek. So, kind of still running three Let's Plays, but one of them is obviously pretty different. Um, and we'll be fixed at one episode a week just because of our lives. Uh, yeah, so let me know what you think. Should I stick with that or should I mix in the large scale American farming that I have been talking about, although I've been looking at some other american maps because there are some american maps with some nice features in them but yeah it, it's typical for me isn't it i you know i get that kind of decision paralysis and struggle to commit to something this is not going to be all a a really long talky video i know they are pretty popular but this evening i am pretty tired those that I chat to on Discord will know that one of my dogs has been waking up at half past three every morning for the last four or five days. And I generally don't go back to sleep after that. We don't know why he's waking up. Um, we have a lot of fox activity locally and it could be that there's a fox coming around. 
and that's disturbing him and he's calling out um, so yeah I'm only getting probably four four or five ish quality hour sleep and I am someone who really needs more like seven um, particularly with the training that I do uh, running so yeah I'm feeding really feeding it actually tonight i am away from home and i have the opportunity to get a good night's sleep on top of uh no uh, i'm just setting up vca that's not the right working width i don't think although it might be for lime spreading because obviously some spreaders use a narrow working width for lime so maybe it is it's, so i'm just using control and up arrow to rotate the BCA heading and then I'm going to do it control alt w actually that's really narrow is it really that narrow I guess we'll see it really is that narrow uh, so we're on auto application we're adding three and three quarter pHs or 2.63 tons per hectare no. I'm not sure if we're missing a bit on the edge there but yeah this is quite a narrow spread up but we'll see how we get on whether we can cover the field not using too much because I'm you know I'm not overly fussed about if it's a bit narrower but it uses a lot less um, let's just do okay so it's got a working width of 12 meters with lime did I miss a setting or something? Can't actually stop going down the hill, so we'll wait until we turn. We won't park in the lake or the river. Looks like uphill, so we'll stop there. Did I miss a setting in there or something when I... I'm sure it was a 30 meter width. No, I guess lime is just much narrower, which yeah, said some spreaders do that. I assume that it's because lime is heavier to spread than fertilizer. So we're going to go with it because we're really not using very much at all. We've not even used 1% and adding quite a bit of lime here. We're up to 6.13 tons per hectare. And uh, yeah, we still not used much lime at all a lot of the fields I am going to lime on course plate come on come on you can get up the hill you can get up the hill guess we're gonna have to run across the hill so me setting um GPS was kind of a waste of time but yeah so this was released as part of the Yan pack on one of Giants weekend drops I have no idea if these packs they release are official sort of branded partner releases or they often seem to be but they're really cool some really nice packs coming we've had the the yan pack we had the bandarat pack this weekend so giants are are you know doing a good job of getting content out i know some people say we need mod x or y but you just gotta wait mods have to get through the testing process modders have to update mods if they fail testing this is really really slow um, I think we're going to put this on a bigger tractor. Don't roll into the river. Probably shouldn't have unhooked it facing downhill, but you know, it's the kind of thing that I do. I think we're going to grab the Deutz off the Orca wagon for now. Maybe the T7 actually. Yeah, let's go grab the T7. We used that to plow up the field next door last time. Probably have course play running the crop scanner already. In fact, we'll do that on the way back past. Where did I leave the T7? There it is. So we'll just we'll abandon this guy here for now. Hello, sheep. Hopefully, this will be more up to the job. I'd like to leave the Deutz on the auger wagon in case we need to do some refilling of lime. It's 
So let's jump out and get the little massy going on the crop scanner. In our newly enlarged field. So I did, I think I've said, I did ask about the uh, the big fields thing. And there was a mixture of do and don't. In fact, it was one each of do and don't. So I think we're going to leave the fields as is. Um, partly because I don't feel like going in and editing the map today. So... Off that goes. Back in the T7. Wait a little bit. These hedges are really tall. Um, so what else have we got to talk about today? The the forage dealer pack is probably somewhere through testing at the moment. I resubmitted that on Sunday night. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully that will get through this time. And I am learning a lot about what a mod needs to have in it as I go through this process and a lot of people say oh giants failed the mods again so, and when I first get them back I do feel like that but actually they are making the mods better um don't need the course play menu open come on up we go um my view anyway they are making the mods better when they give me the feedback that I need to change things um so the forage dealer pack that came back to me that was missing some pretty important things and one the uh, so it's got an AI spline built into it so that it will link up with the AI workers and it will work with the AI workers built into the game um, the first time that I'd ever included that in a mod and there was a problem with it that if you sculpted the terrain around one of the placeables you could see the line of the spline the line of the spline which looks really you know not good at all in my view even the giants weren't happy with it either and um, so they were really helpful actually because i could not work out how to get that thing to not display and uh with a bit of backwards and forwards and messaging them if you're submitting mods and you get feedback and you don't understand it ask them uh, i messaged them and they came back and they gave me the exact bit of code i needed to add in to the uh, i3d file in the mod to fix it within 20 minutes of me asking um so yeah if you're start getting started in making mods and you get feedback that you don't understand or you know giants have sent your mod back because you need to improve things and you don't understand just ask them they are really helpful in my experience so we'll see how that gets on. Hopefully that will be released at some point. The mods that released last week are doing really well. The fixed crop prices is doing really well. I'm assuming um, that that's because a bunch of you don't want the crop variation. We're using it on our multiplayer series. So yeah, it's, uh, it's not one that I will use very often, I don't think. Um, it doesn't suit how I generally play. But yeah, it's, uh, I created it because someone not was asking if there was a way to do it, and I was curious. I wanted to see if I could enable it, and the way it's done, it's all platforms, which is even cooler. Uh, and then there's the industrial BGA, which is just a big old beast of a BGA. But yeah, if you can afford it, is in my opinion the way to go for a BGA. But I would say that because I created it, so ultimately your choice as to whether it suits with how you play the game yeah, i have been rambling for quite a long time and i would like to have a break now so we're not going to go into the river but i am going to loop around the wrong way just so i can pick up this corner um, i think what i'm going to do is finish this headland off and then we will get into some time lapse do like how with precision farming if you've already limed or fertilized an area it switches off it's such a good addition to the game i wish that was part of base game and giants when you do one of your updates make that a feature of base game you've clearly got the code in the game now to tell whether lime needs applying 
So put it into the whole game, not just precision farming. It's going to be a slow chug up the hill again, and then we're just going to run across the field. But so far, we've used 400 litres of lime to do the two headlands. We need more horsepower still. And it, when, when I was setting up this map, I brought the the big class, the Deutz, and this T7, because I knew these hills would be rough on tractors. I didn't appreciate just how rough, I don't think. So, yeah, I, I still stand by my previous statement that I need another big tractor. I need a big, another big tractor. I need cows. I need lots more cows. Um, and I need to find money to pay off a loan. Yeah. I think, so, originally, I had planned to do grapes on here I might end up disappointing some of you but I think at least this year that's not going to be feasible what I'm thinking is that we need to make a significant amount of money that's kind of obvious I know how are we going to make that significant amount of money? We have a huge area of land um, that originally was intended to be partly a vineyard. What I'm thinking is we jump on the cheaty plow. Uh, once we've cleared out the trees and put those through the biomass heating plant, I need to put another headland down there. Uh, yeah, we jump on the cheaty plow. We plow that field in, or that wild land in. And we turn that into a big old maize field. Um, and we do a monster silage harvest on there. We do it in the bunkers, probably, so that we ferment quicker. Maybe we've got... This three big bunkers we do a big old maize harvest and I think I set GPS up the wrong way yeah we want GPS to run along here uh, we do a big old maize harvest and we sell it all for silage through the BGA is what I'm thinking because I think that is the only way that I can see that in the short term we are going to make enough money to start hitting that loan hard. Now, it's not going to pay off for another year, but I think that's the way to go. I want to do grapes. I think I need to do silage. Um, so we're doing a lot of different things on here anyway. I'm completely forgetting my keys for GPS. Let's see if we can get this lined up. There we go. There we go. Um, yeah, we're doing a lot of different things on here anyway, and I don't think grapes are the way to go at the moment. We're going to be doing maize for silage. We're going to be doing potatoes, and we're going to be using dazed potato factory mod with those. We're doing canola for wood chips, so that's a bit different as well. So yeah, I, I, I think that over the winter period, we need to clear the trees off of that, plow in a, as big a field as we can do, and we're going to cash crop the hell out of that. We own all of that. That single area is almost as big as our entire farm. We might need another cheaty plow or seven. We're going to set up a custom course play field on there and we are going to make that into a monstrous silage field. Um, that deals with the big fields question as well. I know that this is that's maybe not 
representative of the map but that area down there is down there for development and we're going to develop it in that way unless you lot violently disagree because it's not going to be in today's video that we get there so definitely enough talking now future me will be with you in a bit to time lapse his way through this field and uh yeah i will talk to you in a little while he's also going to remind you that you don't get wood chips from canola how were you thinking it's poplar canola poplar for canola well it's just as bad poplar for wood chips um so yeah this is kind of a long one that's what she said um because i really really wanted to get these two fields seeded and in the end i remembered i needed to roll them today as well because they're probably going to advance the growth state overnight so that's what we do um that was me trying to use the auto drive lane switch and i used control rather than alt um, i am enjoying using that function rather a lot at the moment um seems to work quite an auto drive vca gps she's my brain is pickled at the moment no i'm not drunk um yeah the the vca gps lane switch function i am loving at the moment um i don't know if it's been updated but it seems to work really well uh, so kind of enjoying that getting some crop scanning done still this uh that yan lime spreader that i'm using i managed to lime all of the arable fields that we have left and i didn't even use half of the lime spread at full so if you're doing precision farming and one of the things that annoys you is how much lime you have to use you can download that and lease it just to do that for that first application it really helps you know it's maybe a bit cheaty so maybe you don't want to use it all the way through but just to get that first application done definitely works really well uh, so just getting the crop scanner going on some of our grass fields now whilst we continue to spread lime see we've done two pretty big fields and not used eight percent yet a quick shout out to all of the channel members thanks for your continued support it um really helps out and it makes me a little bit happier so yeah that's kind of cool um for channel membership you uh you get the if you're on discord you get access to the channel members discord you get that cool little icon next to your name which changes over time uh i think up to i think it's a month two months three months and then six months or something like that um and i tend to do uh members only posts occasionally and you might get early access to some videos and stuff might it's not that's definitely not a guarantee um i mentioned in i think in the last calmston video that i am looking at setting up patreon i have almost got that done um some life stuff has slowed me down on that some funnies with their website slowed me down on that because i got most of this up within about half an hour but something just would not change um so that is going to be becoming available soon if you're interested in supporting the channel a bit more um i just need to get a bit more work done on that which will probably be next week when that goes live um there's going to be three tiers on there and the first one is kind of a basic tier it's a bit like the youtube channel membership uh the difference is that i'm going to try and post more behind the scenes stuff on patreon the basic tier will get you access to the the channel members discord uh, so the same as the youtube and the patreon news feed which is going to have probably pictures from videos that are in progress um, ideas for tutorials and new series um, that kind of thing so you'll get access to the feed um, if you go for the second tier on there you will get access to the members chat the feed um, you'll also get to have some creative input into future series and future projects I'm not sure how i'm going to manage that um, and also you'll get access to an exclusive patreon only series that's going to be the video is going to be on youtube but they will only be available for patreons um, and then there is a small much higher tier which is basically 
you're really awesome and you're really supporting the channel and for that you'll get um i'll mention you in the videos and um you get in a special an extra special role on discord um yeah so that, that's coming soon um basically what i want to do is get some of the patreon only series recorded in advance so that if people do start supporting the channel they get something for it back to this video um selling off both of the cedars that we own already and because i want to get a direct drill now we're using precision farming i think it's a good idea to have a direct drill we had a six meter and a four meter we have sold those and we are going to buy the horst pronto 9 dc i don't think i've ever used this um, but it's a nine meter direct drill and it was pretty much a direct swap so yeah kind of happy with that um, what i've forgotten to mention um, is that you might notice that the picture's slightly skewed and we're missing part of the upper right hand side of the screen that was me having a, uh, a funny with obs um, and it doesn't look too bad so i'm going to leave it i was going to try and remove it in editing but i think it looks okay so hopefully you can tolerate that for one video a lot of this was recorded in a hotel room so i only had one screen so i couldn't really see what obs was recording um, so at the moment i am just moving some stuff about because um I need to find the plow to put on the back of the glass because i'd forgotten where i had stored it um and then we're going to set up the doits with one of the slurry tanks um, so we can put some digestate on the field as kind of a base layer of fertilization for precision farming and then we are going to plow because we had sugar beet in that field so it does need plowing um, just because there is an environmental impact for plowing i'm still going to do it because you know, you could take a big hit on yield, I think, if you're in the need plowing state. So we're going to plow and we're going to plow and then we're going to direct drill into it and um, just setting auto drive up to manage the digestate filling. And what I have noticed, and I think there are some videos around about it, is that if you plow and then you direct drill into that, you don't take the hit on the environmental score. That's what I'm seeing so far on here. So uh, we're going to set course play up three headlands and then the up down rows we're going to get auto drive going as well to do the filling for us so that will automate this what i need to go and check quickly is how much we nitrogen we need for the oats so oats need 80 to 140 units of nitrogen i think so we're just going to add 25 here and um, that'll get us part of the way up and then i'm um, unusually for me um so the auto drive has taken over because the tank's empty so we've got to go and fill Normally what I would do is then jump in a solid vert spreader or the, the new cedar applies fertilizer. And normally I would apply fertilizer straight away. What I'm going to do, because I'm curious about the crop scanners, is we're going to leave this to grow over the winter. When it's at a, a later growth stage, we're going to go over it with the solid foot, then with the crop scanner, and we're going to hit it with that and see what happens. So. I'm going to let the uh, the Deutz get a little bit of a head start and then we'll jump back in the class and start plowing because the uh, the working width of this is wide enough that once it's got a bit of a head start we can make a start on the plowing. I think that's the plan. What I'm doing now is looking to see if I have a mulcher. Um, and I was actually looking for the 7 series because I'd forgotten to restart it after a save. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I realized that this field hasn't been mulched and mulching gives a half decent bonus. So I realized I don't have a mulcher. I only have a roller and I didn't want to go and lease another one. So yeah, we are just going to plow it in and we'll roll afterwards. So it's not so bad. We are going to need to rock pick, which I also forgot because plowing on here throws up big rocks, which is strange because it should be small rocks and also this corner is kind of funny the tractor seems to get a bit stuck so we're going to stick the diff locks on and that seems to sort of had it happen when we rock pick with the t7 it happens as well not sure if there are some weird curves in the terrain there but anyway we are underway plowing and uh get this big field plowed in i say big the field 44 next to it's even bigger um 
And I think I've mentioned this is going to be oats. Um, so obviously we need the straw for the cows, although cows use almost no straw, which is really annoying and weird. Um, so we need the straw for the cows and then the oats will go through the flour mill as we're doing at the moment with our current oat crop. And yeah, that'll turn into some cash. Maybe we'll do some bread or something next year. At the moment we're just selling the oats. Maybe next year we should look at putting in a bakery, doing some bread. I don't know. I don't know whether I'm pushing the productions too hard. So anyway, in the intro spiel, which was kind of long, um, I was saying about turning the wild land area into a big field. I am going to do that. So the next video will probably be us chipping the trees that are in there and maybe starting to plow that in. Um, what I want to do down there is um, add in a couple of silage clamps and then once that's ready to harvest, we're gonna put in the industrial BGA made by this guy called Disturb Simulations, um, which will eat through that silage really quickly. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have another BGA on here. Um, but I want a chance to play with my own mods and I haven't yet. So uh, I think that is a good idea. Um, just seeing some of the channel members names popping up as they are working for us. We're just going to loop around the uh, this grass field, field 79. These are liming as well. You can see so far we've used 30% of the lime spreader covering a pretty big area. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, yeah, so I, I want to play with my own mods and I haven't yet. So we're gonna stick in the industrial BGA down there, a couple of big silage clamps and we're gonna run a big silage harvest on there. And then we'll do some grapes, maybe. Or maybe we'll just use that field to do some big harvests. Um, I said in, again, in the last Carmson video, I'm probably gonna stick with two Let's Plays plus the multiplayer at the moment. So we can have a few more videos on the two main series, uh, Carmson and Greenlands. Um, so that means we're not going to be doing the big American map for a while, so that might scratch my itch of wanting to test course play and auto drive because that's going to be a huge field so we're probably going to need to run a bit like the tutorial idea we're probably going to be running two forage harvesters a bunch of tractors carting it's going to be a mess but it's going to be fun when we get there uh, excuse me while i just try and take some pictures for potential um thumbnails i think that one might actually have been the thumbnail so that's pro shot um, which if you want to take pictures of the game is a really cool mod um, so see what it lets you do is when you pause the game you can move the camera around and take the pictures that you want um, but you can also you can move the sun around so you can change the time of day so you can move the shadows you can push the graphics quality right up you can put um, torches and place lights and stuff in there um, it's got so many features you can play with all the camera settings is really good um, all I use it for is moving the camera around uh, I bump the quality up to maximum which is like a one button press and occasionally I'll move the sun a little bit to get the shadows in the right place um, particularly useful on a field like this where we are the wrong side of the hill for the sun that's why it's one o'clock in the afternoon it feels like it's dark on here it's just because we're you know, we're behind the hill so we're in the shadow see the shadows from the uh, the shed there to give you an idea of that using the iconic I guess iconic rock picker which is kind of cheaty I know but I hate rock picking and this makes it enjoyable I find um, it actually runs at 18 miles an hour I don't run it that fast um, the main thing I like is it's got a 9 meter working width and it holds enough that I don't have to stop uh, once we're finished with the field work, we'll take it over to the rock crusher and turn it into lime. Both fields are ploughed. Um, we need to get some seed in the cedar. This proves to be quite tricky, actually. Um, the little massy is definitely not up to the job. Um, the front loader on here is not designed to reach into this cedar. Um, later on, we're going to try the telehandler and see if that's any better. But for now, I'm just going to jump in the tractor and hit R. I just wanted to get going on this. It's it was quite a long session to record. Actually, it was done in about three sessions, but it's quite a long time to record. Um, and I don't have many videos stocked up. And I'm, as I've said, I'm very busy next week. I've said, I think I've said it a few times in a few videos. 
Um, so I'm trying to get enough content out to at least last until the start of next week or content recorded. So yeah. Right. Got proceed going. Uh, got oats going in. We have a 28 meter sprayer. So I've set it on 27 meter headland. So that's because that's multiples of nine. Um, so we'll get a headland every third, well not headland, tram lines every third run. Um, I need to do two headlands on here. I should have done three. Uh, you'll see why in a bit. I, I'm still getting to grips with the best way to turn proceed on and off. Um, field 44, I run with course play and actually course play does a reasonable job. I set it on three headlands and it seems to do okay. We'll see how these two grow in as to which did the best. Um, so yeah, we're going to get this planted with oats and then rolled and then I am probably going to progress into December in the next video. Um, I had toyed with the idea of staying in November for another video um, because that would let me cut the grass on the wild area, but I'm not going to do that. I want to progress time forwards, otherwise we're just going to stay on the same day forever. So yeah, we need to get this rolled today as well which we'll do in this video um, and then next time we're gonna do a bit of forestry wood chipping trees so probably just going to use a chainsaw um, and there is a man wood crusher on mod hub which i'm gonna have a look at i have not had much luck with wood chippers in fs22 so far i'm hoping that that is a good one and uh, we'll see how we go but yeah as I said, need to clear all of the trees off of that area. Um, and then we can plow in one giant field. If I hadn't added the UK Geo in, I think I could have cut the grass in December. But if I'm remembering right, when we go into December, it's going to get knocked back to a state that's not mobile. So, um, yeah, this has turned into a really long video. I recorded a lot of footage. Um, I've rambled about the Kubota DLC already in the next comms video, which hasn't come out yet, but I am excited about that. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the cool stuff that's coming in that. There are some nice looking tractors. I'm st stupidly, I don't know why I'm excited about the skid steer. I think it looks cool. Um, I think it's because I see it on some of the YouTube videos that I watch um, of real life American and Canadian farmers. Um, they tend to like their Kubota stuff over there, which is, yeah, it's going to be cool. It's just nice to have another brand. We're getting a lot of new brands. What I'm disappointed about, and this is another rant, um, this rant might come out before the Calmston rant, um, is the fact that the um, passenger script that they're adding in, so they're adding in the ability in multiplayer for passengers to ride in um, the UTVs that are in the game, including the ones that are in the Kubota DLC and cars and trucks, um, that's locked to the DLC. So um, I had assumed wrongly initially that that would be part of a game update that comes with the DLC. I'm sure like um, I think with the Antonio Carrero DLC and with Precision Farming, we obviously got game updates that came just before them. And I had assumed that that passenger script would be part of the game update available for everyone, but it is not. It is part of the DLC, which is, I think, a bad move by Giants. Locking game functionality behind a paywall is not something that I am keen on. Um, I have seen that I think GTX is working on the universal passenger script, which might get around that. Um, what I'm just checking on there, it didn't really leave it on the screen long enough, is we're getting close to the max tillage bonus. Even though we've plowed, because we've plowed and then we're direct drilling, we seem to get a good tillage bonus, which is cool and interesting. I mean, as we're saying, so GTX is working on the universal passenger script, which might get around the fact that it's, uh, it's locked in the DLC. The other problem with it being locked in the DLC is DLCs are encrypted, um, which means that modders can't get access to the data or modders can't get access to the data legitimately and use it in mods for ModHub. Um, I'm sure you will remember the SID modding thing with the 3D tracks that were ripped out of the, um, I think they came, were pulled out of the class DLC. Yep, same problem. Uh, and that's why we never saw any fast bales in 
FS19 as mods particularly because the code to do that was locked in the Cavernal and Vicon DLC. Now I have seen on King's Mod now um, there uh, and someone has sent me a private edited one as well that there are fast bail edits of some of the other mod other bailers now because the code is in base game stuff so yeah that's cool we're gonna have a go with the tele handler at loading the seed up Let's see if that works I need to get a bag lifter for the tele handler this is uh, breaking all sorts of UK health and safety law I believe I believe they are required to use bag lifters these days and um, you probably shouldn't run under the bag of seed but it doesn't seem to be getting far enough in so again we're just going to hit our one bag of seed should be enough to finish the field just park the telehandler up and we're going to stick this guy on course play um so the only thing that i will need to do is on the headlands keep an eye on it to enable the tram line on the second headland after that, the uh, running proceed on semi-automatic mode will work just fine for course play. It will put the tram lines in, in pretty much the right place. Um, what I need to do is tell course play to not use fertilizer um, because this is a seeder that can use fertilizer. And as I said, I want to apply fertilizer once we've got a growth state or two or three using the crop scanner to see if it actually makes a difference to how much is applied last job um is to roll well the last job on field 43 is to roll it we're then going to have to roll field 44. um i'm in the video i'm just going to show field 43 and uh, field 44 i will finish off camera because so this is a long video and uh, i needed to get it edited and edited rendered record the commentary re-edit the sound and re-render but we did get a chance to grab some nice shots of the two class working in tandem. And that's what I love about using course play and auto drive um, is on a single player game, I can have the farm feel busy. I like that. Um, got my eye on one of that, that little forest that's just off to the right hand side. It's about 80 grand and it might make a nice wind project. Um, if we keep that wood chipper, Maybe we can build up a big stockpile of wood chips to keep the heating plant going through the year. Uh, we've yet to test that, so that will be interesting. And at this point, I am going to say thanks for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click the like button and leave me a comment, and I will catch you next time on FS22. Actually, what we're quickly going to do, or what I've done and not mentioned, is I paid quarter of a million pounds off the loan. Totally missed that. Um, Thanks for watching, folks, and I will catch you next time. Yeah, I paid a bit off the line. <laughs>